Okay, first of all, Matt, thank you very much. It's, it's, it's very an honor to see you, to meet you. And first of all, it's an honor for, as a Mexican, obviously, to have that you make an interest in for a character like Feyobi, like a character who his biggest success was here in our country. But first of all, my first question is, why direct? Why do you sit on the chair of the director instead of an actor or instead of only making the interviews or I'm just producer? Why do you have to direct this film? Because I'm a masochist. <laughs> That's the best, the best answer. Well, uh, you know, one of the things that I, this film came together uh, and it was very organic. Um, I didn't realize in 1999 that it would take 20 years for the film to be completed. And, but it, in a way, this film was fulfilling a promise, a promise that I made to myself, but a promise also that I made to Feove, to Joey. And I felt that it's something that I needed to, I needed to do. And what I needed to do for myself personally was, you know, this is a music that is very a part of who, my life and who I am. And, and, uh, and I needed to, to explore this part of who I am. And one thing about me, I have a, uh, my drum teacher says, one thing about you is that I have a stick to itiveness you know this word, like it's a slang, but mm -hmm. that I'm very determined, very persistent. I'm not the best drummer, but I stick to it. Mm -hmm. And it's like this film is something that I'm going to get it done. I'm going to see it through. And it was not easy because it's not a sensational film. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, what I mean is it doesn't have like a, an unsolved murder or it's not, it's a film about friendship and about creativity and we explore the nuance of, of uh, human beings and creativity and, and, and life and the finite nature of how much time we have in life mm -hmm. to get the things done that we want to do. And, and I'm really, uh, I have to say, and I, if I can humbly say that I'm quite proud of, of the film and everybody involved in it uh, I had a great team folks from Mexico, great producers and the crew in Mexico and in the United States mm -hmm. and, and in Cuba, because these are the three uh, major uh, countries that this film is about, but Mexico in particular, this is, this was where I first met Feobi. This is where the film was born. This is where, you know, I first met this remarkable artist and and it was my first trip ever to mexico mm -hmm. mexico city i should say mm -hmm. i think i'd been to other places but mexico city and i was warned before i left by a famous mexican actress whose name i will not say she said to me you cannot go to mexico you go there it's dangerous it's crazy it's 1999 mm -hmm. and i was like i listened to her i said okay and uh, we went, and then when we were there, people told us, oh, you can't go and film there because it's dangerous and this and that. We said, okay, and we went anyway. <laughs> and I had to say that we were treated with hospitality, uh, treated us hospitably, with generosity and kindness. That's my experience. That's I'm very it. fortunate, and, and I think in that way that I feel that Mexico it gets, a, you know, unfairly, bad reputation abroad. I know, look, bad stuff happens everywhere, but I had nothing but great experiences and made great friends there. And, and I think that's an interesting thing because I think that is what Feobe experienced when he mm -hmm. arrived. And he dreamed, he said, I dreamed of Mexico. Mm -hmm. I'd never been there, but I dreamed of the place because it, it represented an opportunity for him because he had seen it through his best friend, Jose Antonio Mendez had come. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to bring you there. Because he was struggling in Cuba. He was a great artist, but he wasn't making any headway. And I think part of the reason was his particular style was unique and maybe not something that was, 
that you could harness in any way. It wasn't safe, it was risk taking. But also he was a showman and he needed to be in the front. He needed to be front and center mm -hmm. and television gave him that opportunity. But in Cuba, television was not open yes. to blacks as much. But in Mexico, they, oh, the door was open and he, he, he said, I made a name and, 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 and I became the artist that I am in Mexico. And I found that there were so many Cubans and many that I met that I interviewed in this film. And that was the experience that they had, that they're, they were able to uh, develop as artists in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And and we can go down the list from Benny More to Paris Prado, Prado. to Jose Antonio Mendes to Mango Santa Maria. So many of them. They they bought Celia Cruz came through Mexico. Celia Gonzalez. Uh, mm -hmm. They came through Mexico. And and as as the great uh, Mexican singer Tony Camargo said, mm -hmm. Mexico was a trampoline for success. You know because of all the things that were being done in film and television. And so when Feobe arrived here, it was instantaneous. Like it was waiting for him. Mexico was waiting for him, you know, mm -hmm. and it was meant to be, but it was, it wasn't, uh, his, his experience was that, you know, he came and in, in, in the height of the Mambo and, and, and all the great things happening in the fifties, musically exciting, stuff and then rock and roll kicks in and it changes everything and by the yes. second <laughs> yes in in all the part of the world yes it, it happens i have three minutes but I, I i need to ask you this sure uh please tell me how do you prepare the interviews the, is, do you study do you prepare it or, or you go and let's get and let's find what happened well i prepared because i've been preparing since the moment I picked up uh, a Charlie Palmieri record in New York City mm -hmm. and I listened to this music and I got hooked, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love Latin music. So the people I was speaking to, I was familiar with. I mm -hmm. knew who they were, you know? And I had, in the way that I needed to prepare was to know what their relationship was. Like I knew Lobo and Melon. Mm -hmm. So when I interviewed Melon, I knew Melon. Mm -hmm. And I knew Melon worked with Feobe. Mm -hmm. I was warned that be careful with Malone because he's a tough personality, right? And so in speaking with him, you know, I, I, I knew what he was talking about, you know, I, I knew what he was talking about uh, with regards to the music. But you know, there were many things when I first met Feobe in 1999, he talked very glowingly about his best friend, Jose Antonio Mendez, who came and was a beloved figure in Mexico. Yeah. Because he played these boleros and he was, and he had an influence on the trio, the trios in, in Mexico. And so many people like Arturo Castro told me, the great, from the Castro brothers said, he became a musician because of Jose Antonio Mendes when he heard him, you know? And so I, I became interested. I just loved the music, you know? And uh, I just got hooked on it, you know? Yes, and I loved, I know. But I learned a lot along the way. Carlos, Carlos, uh, you said it uh, just to tell them. You can say it. Uh, Carlos just said that the problem is not to you to prepare the interviews. The problem was to shut you up. <laughs> What I was saying is that the best part of working with you was that you really had all the knowledge and and you knew like like very deep inside about the subject. So instead of having a problem of preparing the interviews, the problem was that you had so much knowledge. So it could take you like yeah. going and going and going because it was your passion. Well, you know, to, to make a movie, I think if you're going to make a movie from the ground up and something that takes a while, you have to be interested in the story that you're telling. You have yeah. to be, it has to be something that's going to keep you interested for many years because it takes a while to make. And I, I can imagine the, I don't know, maybe it, editing it was painful for you because with all that knowledge deep behind some, I don't know, some part of the interviews, it was painful for you, editing? You know what? Editing a documentary is an adventure. <laughs> I mean, in my experience, I've only made one other fiction film, but you have a script to work with. With the documentary, the script is 
you, you tell, you find the story in the editing. And, you know, the hardest part on this one was I spoke to so many great people that I was not able to use their interviews. I spoke to Cesar Portillo de la Luz, mm. great songwriter. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to use a lot of these interviews. And, you know, and these people were great, told great stories and stuff. But one thing I learned in making the documentary is you have the audience is only going to be able to absorb information if they are emotionally connected to the characters, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I, I found that I was fortunate and that I had some really good people in this film that, mm -hmm. that were, that I, that I liked and I, and I wanted, and, and they're very lovable people. You know. Yes, I know. Matt, thank you very much. Thank you for these minutes. Now it's only one. You have one more. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Carlos, un gustazo como siempre. Felicidades de verdad. Gran peli, cap. Cuídense mucho. Gracias. Gracias, Iku. Thank you very much. Hey, Carlos, he seems like a good guy, man. Is he in Mexico City? I'm in Puebla. I'm, I'm in Puebla. Whatever you want, one of the big, greatest foods in Mexico, it's here in Puebla. Puebla, is that near Cholula? Yes, yeah. I'm in Cholula, yes. If you, I can see the volcano. So over here, here's the Popo and the Estacihuat in my window over there. Hey, you know, Carlos, there's a guy there that we interviewed. We interviewed him in Cholula. His name is Pepe Fernandez. Pepe Fernandez. He's a good friend of Feola. We have to get in touch with Pepe. We have to show him the film. He loves yes. Feola. You have to come, hey, come on. You have to come back here in Cholula, man. You have a house, you have the mole, you have the chalupas, you have a friend, come on. You have, here, you have movies. The of the film is from Cholula as well, Bondi. Mm. Oh, Bondi's from there. Yeah. Bondi. He lives in Cholula, and I lived in Cholula for six years when I was in university. Yes. Well, that's, I know why you were there, all the pretty uh, muchachas. <laughs> It's, a, it's the greatest place for living when you are young. And when you are old, it's the best. Everything is great here. Really, really, do you have a home here? Just be careful of that volcano. I remember the volcano there. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No volcano. Problem. Volcano. El volcano. Diego, un abrazo. Gracias. Cuídense mucho. Un abrazo. In the beginning. Hay que inventarlo. No, dame. ¿Cómo se llama? Matt. 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 Mateo. Mateo, you know what I mean, Mateo. Mateo, Mateo, did it. I mean, yeah, but yeah, yeah, man. He didn't know what it was. <laughs>